like there's stuff on my lens. Hello lovely people. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Christina aka Northwest Reader and this video is going to be my top books of 2020. I was so lucky to have read books that I, one, I wanted to read and two, that was actually good and entertaining. Even the books I didn't really like, I still found entertainment in in some way. So uh, it was a good reading year for me. For this year, I ended up reading around 125, 127 books. I'm kind of in the middle of books right now. It's almost the end of the year, but I figured I would just knock this video out while I can. So yeah, I'm just going to go through my Goodreads and just point out the books that I, that stood out to me that had an impact in, on me in some type of way. A, lot, a few months ago, I rediscovered my love for horror novels, like horror reading. I just, I haven't been reading scary books or anything like that in forever. And I've just been more focused on like just contemporaries and nonfiction and stuff like that, like memoirs and things, which I still love. But horror, oh my goodness, fell in love with, fell in love with the horror book community. You guys are all amazing. But one of the books that I discovered and one author that I've had that has become my favorite is Sergio Gomez. And the first book of his that I read was Camp Slaughter. So good. If you like gore, horror, all that fun stuff, this is for you. Um, it's kind of Texas Chainsaw Massacre type, but it's just entertaining. It's about a group of kids that, well, not really kids. They're like, well, kids to me. College kids, I believe. They go to a camp to for the summer to hang out, party and stuff. And there's a guy that lives on the grounds that's a cannibal that takes care of them. <laughs> Let's just say that. But oh my goodness, it was so good. I And I read another one of his books, which I'm not going to include on the list, but this was the book to open my eyes to the whole horror genre in general and body horror and gore and stuff like that. It made me realize, holy crap, I love this stuff. <laughs> So in a more recent read, uh, this is a short novella, I believe, and I discovered this author through Instagram, through the horror community, because I've read one of his other shorter horror, no horror novels, and it was like a novella also, and it was really good. But he contacted me asking if I wanted to read this to do a review, and I was like, heck yeah, I'll do it. And it's not horror related, but it's, it was so good. It's The Houseplant, a short story by Jeremy Ray. Oh my goodness. It was such a good story. I can't, I've raved about this on another video or a couple videos already now. And it just, it was so good. It was exactly what I needed at the time because I've just, it's a good, I said palate cleanser because it's feel good and yet just so deep and moving by the end of it I was kind of emotional and choked up about it but it's just you're following the perspective of this houseplant and what the houseplant goes through and it's just so good it's funny it's just emotional and you should read it you should go get it and read it and let me know if I'm wrong and if I am you have questionable taste <laughs> no I'm joking I'm joking joke anyways that was really good. A memoir that I read earlier this year that I really enjoyed was um, Saigon, A Misfits Memoir of Great Books, Punk Rock, and The Fight to Fit In by Fook Tran. Um, I gave it five stars. These are obviously going to be all five stars, I believe. It was a really good memoir. Yeah, it's about, he's Vietnamese and he, it's about him living in the 80s slash early 90s in Eastern Pennsylvania in like an all-white town and just what he's going through with his identity and trying to not fit the stereotypes that are put on him and just his family trying to Americanize themselves and it's just it was so good it was really good and yeah I just love the whole aspect of identity and just 
trying to figure out who you are. Another nonfiction book that I read early on this year, which I forgot I even read it this year. I thought I read it last year, but I got it from NetGalley and it's The Office, The Untold Story of the Greatest, the greatest Sitcom of the 2000s in Oral History. If you love the show The Office, this book is for you. It is all about the behind the scenes, about certain episodes, and each section, chapter, is about a specific episode. And oh, it's so good. And it's fun to read a section and then watch the episode. And it's it's just amazing. And when I read this, the I discovered the was it called the office ladies or something like that with Pam and Angela from the show they have their own podcast where they break down episodes from the office and it was it's the book is kind of like that pretty much and yeah I enjoyed it so much I thought it was so good and worthless trivia is just stored in my head about the office even more now <laughs> one book this book is a graphic novel and it just touched my heart like you guys are all seeing the softy in me right now but it is Heartstopper volume one by Alice Oseman oh it was so good it's just about these two high school boys and trying to figure out their identity shocking I love books that you're trying to figure out who you are as a person and their sexuality and then their friendship becoming more than friendship the artwork is beautiful. The story is just so sweet and just like it's high school love and crushing and I it's hard not to relate even if you're not gay or bisexual or anything like that. Like if you ever loved or crushed on someone, you'll know how these two feel in this book. It's so feel good. Oh, so good. One thriller that I really enjoyed and it's the first book I ever read of his and it is What Lies Between Us by John Mars. This was so good. I was so sucked into the story. I can't, it's, I say this and then I'm like I can't remember. Um, go into it not knowing anything. I'll say that. But it's about a relationship, a strained relationship between a daughter and a mother and this power struggle between them and just craziness. So many flips and twists and turns in the story. You're just captivated. It was so good. I look forward to reading his other ones. Um, I have them. I'm like, I'm super impressed by this book. So I can't even fathom how awesome those books are. So yeah, this was one of my favorite thrillers of this year easily. So an anthology that I really enjoyed. I mean, I only read a couple, I want to say maybe a few anthologies this year, but I think my top anthology is Hunger Pangs by Scott J. Moses. It's really good. It's, if I had a book to represent me in high school, this would be the book. <laughs> it's, it has moments of depression and sadness and just heartbreaking moments and stories in it and it's about grief and love and just awfulness <laughs> and I may not be selling this very well but I like to feel those emotions it's just naturally in me I can't help it it's my dark side but it, it, this is a really good book really good and before each story short story he the author gives a little snippet of what was happening in his life at the time and where he came up with the story and it, it was just so good. Oh, another book that I read is, is a bit like a memoir, I would say, but it's This Will Be My Undoing, Living at the Intersection of Black Female and Feminist in White America, I believe, by Morgan Jerkins. I learned a lot from this book. It was just she gives her perspective of being a black a black female in America and just everything that she has to go through and she gives a history of like hair treatment with black women um, the appropriation of women's physiques 
in white culture and it was just it was eye-opening it was really good I was first listening to the audiobook I remember and I just wanted to like mark stuff so I got the physical book and I'm so happy I did because I just like marked the crap out of it <laughs> but very good it 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 needs to be read <laughs> more often than not and to finish out the top books of the year like I just went through my list and I was just just the thing the ones that stood out the most uh, this one I did part of my horror vlog a, a few months ago and it was my favorite book from that reading vlog and it's Bad People by Craig Wahlberg. Chef Kiss. So good. Um, and it's a detective story. Uh, Tom Nolan is a detective and I don't really care for detective stories but it was so good. Um, the horror and just the mystery and you're trying to figure out what is happening essentially the whole entire time and you're just engrossed in the story and you're following different perspectives and it was just it was so good I was so entertained in just this one scene towards the end like it's still vividly in my mind and it reminds me so much of True Detective like it gives that vibe like I just remember it so vividly and how I was feeling when I was reading it and then the reveal at the end and I was just shook shook it to death shook it so good so good um so the Tom Nolan uh book it's actually going to be a series there's a second book after or there's another book after bad people I never remember the name of it I'll put it up La like labyrinth of dolls or something like that I'm gonna read that pretty soon it's I think it's like next on my list my TBR horror list but yeah it was so good he Craig Walwork is a phenomenal writer and yeah very good so yeah those were probably all of my top books of 2020 um, I try to pick a variety if <laughs> If I put all the books that I thought were five stars, yikes, we would be here all day. Um, again, like this year was a terrific reading year for me. It was so much better than last year. And it's funny because 2020 has been a nightmare, absolute nightmare. But my reading has been amazing. All the books, so good. And I'm not going to do a video of books that I hated or disliked from this year because I just, I looked at my ratings and all the books that I like gave maybe like, I think I gave like one two star, maybe a couple, but all of them were really smutty bad books. So I'm like bad romance books. So obviously it's just a genre I'm not super into so I didn't want to make a video about me not liking books that are pretty much all the same that I read for just a guilty pleasure like you know if you want to know what I rated at a lower rating you can go on my Goodreads and just read about it or check out my books that I've read this year but I didn't want to make a video about it like I've had an amazing reading year. I'm going to end it on a high note. High note. Don't know what this is. Hopefully next year continues to be a, a great reading year. I look forward to it. I look forward to so many books coming out and yeah, I'm just ready for 2020 to be done with like everyone else I feel. But again, thanks for watching and I will talk to you later.